Hello guys, Steven here back with another video. Today I'm teaching you guys how to create a neon uh, themed Twitter header. This could work for a uh, Facebook cover as well. I've never done like a lot of tutorials on this. I've always done banner tutorials, so that's why I'm making a video on this today. Uh, if you guys enjoy, hit the thumbs up button and let's just get into it. Before I get started with this video, I just want to say that this whole idea is not mine, really. Uh, my friend Devil Cube actually made a neon logo stroke uh, tutorial, and I got inspiration from that. And the thing is, with that tutorial, is I've never seen any sort of tutorial like around that uh, topic. Like I searched it up, and I couldn't find a tutorial that was similar to it. So it's really cool. I know no idea is original, but I really think that Devil Cube is one of the first few people who actually like did this tutorial, which is really cool. So I just want to say that his channel will be in the description. We're actually doing a collaboration very soon uh, on a YouTube banner. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, stay tuned. And yeah, so let's just get started. You want to press File New. I'm using the CC 2017 version, so it might be different because I know a lot of people use the CS6 version. You want to type in the width and height, and in this case, it's 13,000. No, no 3,000, what am I saying? Uh, by 1,500. They changed it. It used to be like 1,500 by 500 as like the max cap resolution, but it's good that they increased it so that you have higher resolution images now. They also did it with like YouTube thumbnails, which is like pretty cool that they've done that. Uh, it used to be 1280 by 720. Now it's uh, 920 by 1080. So it's good for graphic designers. Uh, good for anyone who wants better looking pictures. Also make sure that the color modes RGB. A lot of times people will do grayscale by accident and everything they put on their canvas is going to be black and white. So make sure it's RGB color, 8 bit, 300 pixels per inch. That's like the perfect settings for like any online work and transparent background contents. So one tip for you guys, uh, one tip that kind of is said a lot in uh, the graphic design community is for Twitter headers, you want to set the transparency of the header as 99%. So at the end, you want to merge everything and set the transparency as 99%. So that's why it's important to make the background contents as transparent. I uh, usually I do it anyways, but it's just a tip that you guys uh, should use. The reason is, is something with the Twitter compression or something like the quality isn't so good if it's 100%, but if it's 99%, it'll turn out as HD. I, I really don't know uh, the specifics, but let's just create it. The first thing I'm going to do is place a black background. So it's easier to see everything. Let's just make the fill black and the stroke nothing. So I'll go really quick through the logo part of things because this is a Twitter header tutorial, not a logo tutorial. And I don't even know where my canvas is. This is actually scary. Where is it? Oh my God, where is it? Oh, <laughs> I was getting scared. Where's my, I should make this like, where is it? Let's make it light gray. Oh, it's there. Oh my God, I got so scared. <laughs> you literally can't see anything. Uh, let's just make it light gray. <laughs> that was scary, man, I swear to God. Okay, so um, you can watch Devil Cube's tutorial on this. It's a lot, you know, more, it's a lot faster because, he, you know, his whole video is on that. But uh, we're going to use the font called um, Go Go Poster Punch, I believe. I never used it. I always had it, but I never used it. And the reason we're using this is because it's symmetrical, like, like right side symmetrical to the left, the top portions uh, symmetrical to the right. I mean the bottom. So we're gonna go go. And it has a really cool look to it. It's like wavy, you know. So we're just gonna censor it here. You want to make a new layer, and now we want to split this up in three parts essentially. And because the top and bottom are the same, really it's just two parts. So we're gonna use our pen tool. Select your pen tool and make a new layer. And we're just gonna cut off a portion here. So essentially two parts is gonna be the same color and then the other part's gonna be a lighter like color, like a lighter version of that color. I'm gonna actually do it like right here. It's a lot easier with the letter N because it doesn't have curves, but uh, let's just do this. It won't be perfect, but it'll be something, right? And I always hated using the pen tool because of the curves and I just really am not patient at all. So I actually made on my, like on my cartoon profile picture uh, tutorial, I used the quick selection tool and it ended up pretty bad. So I should have used the pen tool, but I didn't I'm really guilty of that. But sometimes you have to use the pen tool for like cropping stuff out. Okay. So once you're done selecting a portion of the, the low, the text, you want to right click and press make selection, or you want to press control enter. That's a shortcut in case you guys didn't know. Next, you want to press on the marquee tool and then right click and press stroke. Uh, press seven as the width. Uh, I think this is the ideal width. I like the thickness of it. And now select the main color, like what you want your neon lights to be. Like if it's red, blue, whatever it is. 
Uh, usually blue turns out better than red. I don't know why. I tried this many times. I've done this tutorial like a bunch of times. It just didn't end up really well. So hopefully this time is better. So right now it looks really weird. So let's just hide the S right now. Uh, so what you want to do is make three copies of this same like bottom portion, right? So let's just press control J twice. And now we have three of them, right? Or you can just right click and duplicate the layer if that's easier for you. But control J is how to duplicate it. The first layer at the top should be white. So what you want to do is right click and press blending options. Go to color overlay and white. A faster way to do this is just double clicking on the layer. But uh, if you guys don't know, just blending options. Now we want to rasterize this layer. And then the bottom two should be red. So they are in this case, yes. And now we want to add Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur will act as like the, when you look at the light, it obviously isn't just plain like this, right? It has that, it has like a glow to it. So instead of adding like an outer glow, we're just adding Gaussian blur. It just looks a lot better in my opinion. So the first one should be white. So we're going to add a uh, filter blur, Gaussian blur, and it should be two. And the second one should be 10. So this is the, this is the red layer. So if you see this, this is the red layer. It has Gaussian blur of 10. And this is a uh, Gaussian blur of two. Did I add a Gaussian blur? Cause it doesn't look like it did. I probably did. Okay. The next thing you want to do is go to the first layer and make it overlaid. It isn't as visible here, but if you keep duplicating this, you'll see the glow. And now you want to just go to the second layer, the glow, like the very glowy layer. And you want to just erase portions of it so that the glow uh, kind of appears in some spots, but not like other spots. So just click a random spots with the eraser tool and make sure it's soft brush. So it has zero hardness. We're going to use soft brushes for a majority of this tutorial. So in case you can't see the glow, you just want to press control J. Now you can, you can kind of see where the glow actually is. I think I erased it too much there. Now it should be better. So you can see the glow is not in the middle here because I erased it in the middle. So now we're just going to merge everything. So press control, 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 or press on the bottom layer and press shift on the top. And I press control E to merge them all. So obviously this doesn't look cool, right? It looks kind of weird. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, hate, hate all you want, you know, we're just going to look at the S now we're going to duplicate it. Like I said before, you don't have to make the top again because you already have the bottom. So we're just going to go to control J control T and then flip it vertically and horizontally. And now we can just put it at the top. So now that we have the top and the bottom, we just need the middle portion. So that's pretty simple. Let me just merge these two because we don't really uh, need them to be separate. We're just going to make a new layer and do the same thing we did before. And we're just going to get the middle portion. This is a production. And there we have it. Make selection or control enter. Uh, and then we go to marquee tool, right click, press stroke. And then we're going to make it a lighter uh, red or we can make it like orange. I never tried that. Like I've tried this tutorial many times, but I never tried this. Let's try this. Uh, actually, no. Mm, I, I don't know. Should I? I think I'll just keep it like pink. So let's just hide this layer. And then we just want to. And now we just want to duplicate this twice. So we have three of the layers. So you can see there's three of them right here. Make the first one white. Rasterize this. I think the glow is more apparent, uh, more visible. If you have the S at the background, let's just not put that there. Uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So the first one should be two pixels and overlaid. And the second one should be 10 pixels. So now we have it, we'll just merge these. So press control E to merge. And now we have two of them. So obviously that kind of looks like a neon light, not really. Uh, so let me just show you some tips that can help you out. The first tip is depending on how your letter is, you want to erase portions of it. So one thing I could do with an S that I can't really do with like an N is like I'll erase this part. Like that looks cool, right? That looks super cool. Just one thing I thought of. And then let's just merge these two. And now we can duplicate it again and we could make it a different color and make it 3D. Uh, so one thing that goes really well with red is blue. You can look at the com uh, complementary color wheel, I think. That's what it called. That, that, that's what it called. The, the color wheel. The color wheel. And you can like change the colors. Um, let me just press this so it only affects one there. And you can change the color. So I'd go with something like this. Uh, teal and orange go very well as well. If you're into photography, you would know that. But this looks really cool by itself. So let's just do that. And now I can erase like the top portion now. So we can erase that and we can erase that. And now that looks pretty cool. Like it kind of blends in because the bottom isn't erased, but the top is. And this portion is only erased at the bottom too. It looks, it looks really cool. Like it really flows, you know, I like it a lot like that. So let's just merge those two. There's no need for the S. 
and we can resize this so it's smaller now. So to resize, press Control T, hold Shift and drag to keep the aspect ratio and let's just center it. So to center, you just wanna press Control A, select on the layer, press the Move tool and then select these second and fifth options to center in the middle or you could do layer, align layers to selection and then vertical and horizontal centers. I'll be moving it up slightly just because I wanna add text at the bottom like my channel name or something. So I'll just be pressing Control and the up arrow and then after I can add the text. So what you want to do here is duplicate again. So we're going to duplicate a lot during this tutorial. So we're going to duplicate it uh, three more times. So there's going to be th four S layers. So one, two, three. And we're just going to move this to the side, move this to the side. So essentially right now we have two in the middle, two on the side. We're going to merge these two. Merge these three actually. So that there's three now. Move this to the back because it's going to be the background. Press Control T, hold Shift and drag. And now we want to center it like I showed you before. You can go to layer, align layers to selection, vertical centers, horizontal centers. Or you can just press these shortcuts, which is a lot faster. So obviously you can't really see the text. So we're going to lower the opacity here. Something like that would be good. Go to filter now, blur. But instead of doing Gaussian blur, do motion blur. Motion blur adds this really cool effect. So you can see there's like line streaking and stuff. Looks really cool. That. And you can make it bigger or smaller if you want. I want it to like fit the entire canvas, so I'll just do that. So that's cool. And now we have a really cool like wallpaper in the background. So we don't really need to use stocks or anything. And I'll leave the color correction and lighting to the ending because uh, that's usually what I do. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create a weird pattern in the background. I really want it to be um, abstracty, if you know what I mean. Uh, I usually don't do that. I really keep it simple. Most of the times, like you can tell by my YouTube banner, but in this case, I'll just make it like really abstracty. Not that, like, they're just random lines, just like, like random spaces, just fill up everything. Like, just go crazy on this. Like, if it's getting too repetitive, just click on something else, you know, so that it isn't so repetitive. There, and we're gonna end it off, make selection. Not make selection, you wanna fill path, actually, and make it white. Yeah, let's make it white. Let's move this to the top, make it white. That's good. And now what you wanna do is Control J, Control J. So we duplicated it twice. And you wanna make these red and blue or whatever color it is. Like if you're doing uh, purple and yellow or something like that, you would make those purple and yellow. And so let's just make it blue now or teal. I think it's more of a teal, right? Or like a light blue. And you can't really see the blue. So we're just move like there. And then we're gonna move the white like that. And now we're gonna merge these all, Control E and then overlay. So it looks kind of weird, I know. like. Like I, I can tell, but it looks really cool too, right? Like we just created a pattern without any stocks or anything like that. Uh, let's just make this bigger maybe. I like the placement, it looks cool. So does that not look cool? And you can't see the S anymore because it's covered with everything. So you just wanna erase the middle. Make sure it's a soft brush, like I said before. So the hardness is zero and we'll just erase the middle portion. So it kind of like fades out, you know, I don't know how to show you, but like the sides around it are faded, like the, the background. And now we're going to do the lighting and the color correction so that it looks a lot better because this it by itself looks OK. I would give this like a like a 7.5 um, if I was rating your like portfolio or anything. But let's just make it better. So the first thing I would do is make it brighter and increase uh, cr contrast because I like contrast, right? Looks cool. So something like that's really cool. Next thing I would do is go to color balance and increase the reds because reds the best color of all time or increase the blues. That depends on you. You can do something like that. Just find out what the best color is for you. So you can see the difference between that and that. There's a big difference between this and this, right? And you can tell very easily by just looking at it. And now I'm going to add the lighting. So the lighting will be, there's going to be like a white light at the top. So this is what graphic designers, basically every graphic designer does this. They'll just add a giant white light on the top, press control T and hold shift and drag. And then you'll see like right there in the middle. And they'll also add like a red or like whatever color at the bottom. I'll add a blue because it's missing like some blue, not a lot of blue, but there. So let's just see that by itself, like hide this layer. There's a big difference. You might like, like this one actually. I think this is cleaner and darker. It has a different mood to it. Uh, next thing I'll do is go to the curves, move it up slightly, and then move the top inward. So it like, it gives a lot, like look at the blacks. Like it's a lot more aggressive, you know, and more visible. Um, let me just remove, actually let, let, let's see if I remove the brightness. 
Will it do anything? No, it looks, it looks good. And now I usually add a vintage looks on the sides just to make it look a little bit better. I just like vintage looks for some reason. I, I have no idea. But I like a vintage look on the sides, like a black. Like usually people do this to you, graphic designers. So they do this just so there's a bigger focus on the middle. So you can see the difference between this and this. And the last thing people will do, most graphic designers, I know Visual Arts does this a lot. He'll make a new layer, press white spots, like like random spots where where you want to add focus to, and then press overlay. So you can see the difference between this and this, right? And then now if you go through the hue and saturation under the adjustments layer, you can check for like different colors. So something like that. I like that a lot better than the other one. Still like that a lot. That That's probably my favorite like color scheme. And now the finishing touches, just add Steven Van and maybe a space because you know, grammar and stuff, you know? And usually I'd add a layer style, but it doesn't really fit in this like, like, I guess style, except for maybe a gradient or something, or maybe a glow. I should add a glow, like a red glow at the outside and the inner glow should be like, let's see if it's noticeable. Okay, let's just right click, blending options. Let's go to glow, something like that, right? Like that's noticeable, maybe a blue. Yeah, I think blue looks better and then inner glow maybe should be red. I don't even think it's noticeable, uh, whatever. Let's just go to the, the gradient now and let's go to transparent to white, no black lower it a bit and then yeah and then move back and yeah that's the end of the video uh hopefully you guys enjoyed we use no stocks nothing nothing from the internet we just did this straight in the video so you can see if i re like remove one of these it looks dramatically different if i were to remove like this it looked dramatically different than that if you remove a majority of the color correction it'll look different um if you add like take out the vintage it might look better in your your opinion i'm just adding some of these things in case you guys like it and decide to use it in the future but hope you guys enjoy this video there's a collaboration video coming soon with me and devil cube so if you guys want to check that out you know it's going to be coming soon so yeah my name is steven and i'll see you in the next one